Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golan. We're in Foundry VTT and we're going to be looking at an add-on today. Um, <clears throat> don't worry about the scene you can see here. What are we going to be looking at? Let's look at our managed modules. We're going to be looking at Universal Baptal Map Importer. Um, it's quite a simple little, uh, uh, little module. That's it. That's what it is. <laughs> it's quite a simple little one. Um, but it enables us to import maps that have been pre-generated for us. So before we look too much at the module, what kind of maps are we talking about? Now, I've been having a bit of a delve and looking for uh, alternative places for, get us, for us to get our maps. And of course, you know my philosophy for these videos is where we can get free stuff that we're allowed to use that's appropriate. Um, that's what I want to share with you guys so that you know that you can get them too and you're not having to shell out loads of money um, because not everybody has those resources. And even if you do have those resources, um, you might be able to find what you need for free. So why waste money? Okay, so um, you may be familiar with Dungeon Craft, or Dungeon Draft rather, uh, which is a piece of software that you can use for creating maps and things like that. Um, this is just at dungeondraft.net. Um, and you can use this for creating maps. Now, one of the things it allows you to do is integrate maps created through Dungeon Draft into your VTT. Now, obviously, we're looking at Foundry, but you can see that it does enable you to import into others. Now, for those of you who've been around on um, watching this channel for a while, you will be aware of how terrible my personal art skills are. Um, and <laughs> and I'm not going to make you suffer watching me work through creating them. But there is free stuff here. So let's have a look at this page here. Uh, now, this happens to be, just by doing some Google searches, I came across Anabar Cryptography. Um, who do loads of them. You can actually see on the left hand side I've also got like the Mad Cartographer on here um, as well. But there's loads of maps. Now this particular individual has produced quite a lot of maps using Dungeon Draft and on their Patreon are giving away a lot of those maps for free. 100% free. So I am logged in but I am not a subscriber to, or I'm sorry I'm a subscriber to this Patreon but I don't pay anything for this. This is completely free. I might personally change that and donate some because some of these are excellent. Um, now I happen to be looking at uh, this one which is the Death House. Now this is going to make uh, Lis Pliss, I think it was, um, very happy because this is one of the encounters from uh, The Curse of Strahd. Uh, which is an adventure campaign we are going to look at putting together in the future. Uh, we've got questions around Foundry version 12 to answer before we go down that road. We will be doing it. So I'm already looking at some of the maps and assets we potentially could use. So this is absolutely free for us to download very, very generously. Um, and there are links and things to it. So I've gone through already and downloaded some of these maps. Now, what's special about these is there's two different versions of them. There is the usual um, just image files that you can download. Lovely. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. And that's the kind of maps we've already been using. If we look at um, things like this map of Fandelva that we did, the map of Thunder Tree, etc. So these are just images we've brought in. We've put our grids on, etc. But what the Universal Battle Map Importer allows us to do is to import maps that have already had things like lighting and walls and all of that lot put in. So uh, let's have a look at the uh, the uh, configuration options for this. Uh, there is one. <laughs> I like modules that are really simple. They do the job. They don't have loads of options because then I can't make too many mistakes. Um, and this only option is about whether windows on the map so when it imports the map with the walls and um, doors and windows on can you open and close those that's all that is saying you might want to default to say no you might want to say they can i'm going to leave it as on um, just for the purposes of this so how do we actually use it what do we do okay so on my scenes menu i'm not going to create a new scene what i'm going to do very bottom right you might be able to just see down there there is a new button universal battle map import let's click it uh, and here we have a different way of creating a new scene now we need to give it 
a name. So this is the Death House from Strahd, uh, or the Curse of Strahd rather. Um, and we're just going to store our data ourselves. Do we want to convert the maps and stuff to the WebP? So you can see we've got little pop-ups here. So you can save the Im image as, web, uh, as WebP, which will make them a lot smaller, but creation time is a bit longer, um, et cetera, et cetera. Set a custom grid. Uh, this upload path is about where we want to save our copy of the map once it's been converted. So I'm not going to save it there. Uh, I'm going to save it in my folder in my maps and look how convenient a curse of Strahd I already have a folder for it. So I want to select that directory. So when it imports it, it converts it, it's going to save it back into that directory, the, the new converted map. Um, fidelity of walls, so decide how many cave walls to skip. Right is high fidelity or no wall with no walls skipped. So you put that right the way up. High fidelity creates very large amounts of cave walls recommended to stay at the minimum. So uh, we can fiddle with that however we want. Object walls includes walls from objects that block line of sight. Uh, do we want padding around our scene? Often we have a bit anyway. And here we can actually choose the file we want. So this is important. Let's go in here. Now from Anabar's cartography for the death house, um, you can see the folder here is UVTT file. So these are ones specifically designed for importing that have already been built. And there's a whole bunch of them here. Let's go start with the ground floor. Click this. Let's open it. Uh, and then we can, if we want to, we've got the, the quality here and we've got an offset if we want to. Now, I'm not going to worry about the offset. You can see the, probably can just about read that, nudges the walls away from the edge. If you experience issues, leave it as zero. So we're going to leave it as zero anyway. I'm going to click import. Uh, you can see some blue writing up the top here as it's doing stuff and it's bringing it all in. And now it's finished. We now have a new scene up on the top right that I can go to and activate and here it is so it's brought it in for us these are nice whoops just move properly these are nice looking maps now the death house is part of the village but this is the bit we're interested in this is the death house itself pretty aren't they really really nice and we could have just bought that in as an image except let's click on uh let's click on the walls all the walls are already in here let's click on lights all the lights are already in here um, I don't think there are any sounds brought in with this one. So using things like uh, Dungeon Draft, you can create all of the lights and everything as part of Dungeon Draft, put it all in, export it um, in this format, and then we can bring it in to the Universal Battle Map Importer, and it's all there. So this is a brilliant way if you're creating maps and you want to share them with others, of being able to share all of your uh, lighting and walls and everything else how you want it to go so how quick is this to set up it, it's it's done <laughs> it's it's done uh, which is really really nice now we can take an actor and we can slap and that's going to be Haley, of course we can slap a Haley on here uh, and immediately oh we've got no lighting so obviously I can go to configure and I can change things as I would normally for example I can change the grid um, and I want to put global illumination on for this particular issue. Uh, you can see all those walls are working. We're blocking vision. Okay, we can uh, come in here. I haven't set the grid, so uh, Haley's having a bit of trouble walking around, uh, not fitting through doorways and stuff. But we can open those doors. We can see we've got lights. Here we go. Look how bright that is. Okay, it's nicely lit, etc. And we can do all of those things that we want to do walking around here with all those walls i'm just trying to go up right now won't let me I'm trying to go right can't go any further because all the walls work so really really nice to be able to just bring those assets in already done somebody else has done all the hard work for us so really really nice little module so um yeah a little bit of a teaser for uh, Liz Pliss who has specifically asked for Curse of Strahd for us to build that. I'm going to probably be using all of these assets from Anabar Cartography uh, and using all of, uh, I, do you know what I was about to say he? I, that's an assumption. I have no idea if Anabar is, uh, is male or female. Um, but from Anabar I'm going to be using I think those assets because they're pretty and they've done all of the real hard work and the, the laborious, boring bits. They've done it for us, which is really, really good. Now, 
there's multiple levels to this. So what happens if we try to bring in a tile and want to use levels? Well, if we go to the uh, tile selector, we bring this up. Um, obviously, I can choose a new file uh, and I want the first floor. I can bring that in. It won't let me bring it in because it's not an image file because it's one of those, um, the VTT specific ones. So I can't do it like that. Not going to work. Um, of course, as I said, these are available as the VTT ones already, like we just bought in, or as a plain image. If I use a tile to bring in the next level as another layer, I can only bring that in as an image for the tile, which is fine, and that works. We saw that when we were looking at the, uh, the levels mod, but it's not going to bring in all the lights and stuff. That's not going to happen. So what we would need to do is we go to Universal Battle Map. We're going to call it uh, let's call it DH First Floor. We're going to have to bring in another one for us. Um, choose my file, First Floor, Open, Import. Here it comes. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now all of these maps are going to be the same scale. So once I've worked out what the grid scale is on this and aligned it, the next one's going to be really easy just to change that. We can see on the right hand side I have my next scene here. Uh, it doesn't have all the other stuff around it. So if we do it ourselves and use the images, we can use levels to build these on top of each other. If we want to use the universal battle map importer and we're bringing in those pre-done, because look again, all the walls are there uh, and we've got lights and stuff. If we want to use this method, then we will have to have each map on a different scene rather than using tiles and using levels. Does that make it a bit awkward? It could do, um, except we have looked at um, Monk's active tile triggers to be able to teleport ourselves around. And in the last video, we were looking at, just bear, remind myself, Stairways Teleporter mod, and we saw that that can transition us from one scene to another. So when we look at something like uh, this staircase here, we just turn that into a teleporter which will teleport players between one scene and the other relatively seamlessly. They won't really notice that it's that, that, that they're moving. It will do it nice and quick for us. So I'm probably, when I get to doing the Curse of Strahd, I'll probably be using these maps pre-built and just have them as different scenes. Now I'm going to organise and create some folders. I'm going to have the Death House folder with all the different levels of the Death House in it. Um, mostly because if you saw, okay, just go to here, we have the ground floor, first floor, second floor, attic, and then we've got the lower dungeon and upper dungeon as well. There's just two, uh, two different versions of that map, um, almost identical. So there's quite a few, so I'm going to keep those scenes together in a file, uh, sorry, in a folder in my scenes menu there, just to keep them all in one place. So uh, a couple of different things there, of course. Uh, the Universal Battle Map Importer, let somebody else do the hard work. Of course, it restricts. I can make any amendments to this. I can change where windows are, doors are, anything I want to do, I can absolutely do. Of course I can. Um, but beautiful map, already done for us. We might want to tweak things, lights, sound, things like that. We can do that um, nice and nice and easy. So just to remind you where I got this from, because I'm kind of showcasing um, both things here. Uh, this is Anabar Cartography at the top there, A-O-N-B-A-R-R. Um, very, very much appreciative for all those con content creators who put in all of the hours to produce this stuff and then just give it away free. Um, beautiful, huh? You can't argue with that. Uh, and for the whole of the Strad area, they've got all of them here. Um, I've actually got a, I've got that on there. Uh, let's get rid of that filter. But they've got loads of stuff here. Now, there is stuff that you can pay for. Um, but look, this is again from the same module. We've got outdoor maps, uh, Mad Mary's Townhouse, the gates of uh, Barovia. Again, all from that one module. So he's got the entire module's worth of maps that has been redone. So that's amazing, amazing work that makes our life really easy. So a bit of a quick video, this one, because it does exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, really nice, uh, it's really smooth. Um, my only question that I have that's got nothing to do with this module or with Anabar's work um, is about what we do about creating 
the Curse of Strahd adventure and whether we create that in Foundry version 11 that we've got now or whether we potentially look at upgrading to version 12 of Foundry when that comes out and doing it in there. Um, we'll have to decide. As we get a bit closer to that release date, I think we'll probably do a poll or something to see what people want to do. If people are already invested in version 11 and are not looking to upgrade, we'll stay in version 11. If people are interested in seeing what the changes are uh, and how that would impact them if they upgraded, we'll upgrade to version 12 uh, and then we'll start this from scratch using those new version 12 tools but we will revert we, we will review foundry version 12 when it's released and go through what allegedly that is going to do that is going to be different um, and it's not huge amounts but the bits they are doing are impactful for what we've already done anyway i'm waffling again thank you very much for your time you take care and i will see you in the next one